Hi guys, welcome back to another video where we rank something dear to your heart and don't offend you one bit whatsoever. Now today we're going to be ranking the classic Total War titles. Classic in the sense that they're the old titles, I guess that's why. Uh, I've not really played any of the new titles because I don't really like the engine that much. That might be sacrilege to some of you. I know Warhammer 2 is very popular, but I am more of an old stan. I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because I don't like the engine. But yes, we're ranking all the old titles um, and we're having a look. We'll go all the way up to Attila. So let's see where we're going to rank them, shall we? Uh, this is going to be fantastic and I'm sure I'm not going to offend any of you guys. Now we're going to look at the games without mods, I guess you would say. If we include mods, you know, every single game would be S because, say for Empire, for example, I would not put it up towards the top because of its release. Uh, but if you included Empire Total War with Darth Mod, it would be great. I mean, but yeah, we're not going to be including mods too much. And we're going to go from earliest to start. So let's have a look. Shogun Total War, the original. There's only one place that this can go. And that's got to be S. Because even though I haven't even played this game. Because it's too old even for me. And I'm an old fuck right now. Um, it started off the franchise. It kicked off this amazing, amazing franchise. Like I believe it's... It's the originator. It's the original. It has to go in S because it started this wave, this journey to all these brilliant new games. Uh, that sounded a bit new agey, didn't it? Um, a bit of Feng Shui in there. But yes, Shogun Total War has got to go S because it started this journey to all these games that you guys all love. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here watching this video. Now, let's go for Medieval. Medieval the original. Solid C tier. I mean, it builds. It's hard to say it because, again, it's it's one of the originals. It's one of the starters of the whole franchise. But, of course, it's not that great. And playing it now it is really, really, really outdated. So much more outdated than even Rome or Medieval 2 if you play the original on that. Um, you know, it's it's got to go C tier. I know some of you love it, but it has to. It has to. Um, yes, now we'll go for the original Rome. Wow, this game. Oh my god. I'm wearing my nostalgia tinted pe spectacles whenever I play this game, guys. It is amazing. It was my childhood playing this game. Uh, and that's why it's got to go in S. It is a fantastic game. So much diversity. Very easy. Not greatly historically accurate. <laughs> But yes, great fun. And that is what I, I don't know, Warhammer 2, you could say that fun has come back. But with some of these later titles, you know, Three Kingdoms, Britannia, the fun kind of has left the game at that point. They're too bothered about historical accuracy and all that stuff. Rome Total War basically said, do you know what? Fuck historical accuracy. But if we put all these factions together in the same timeline and, and decided what would happen if they all force each other? And it's fucking brilliant. Uh, great uh, diversity of troops. And I, I genuinely believe that's why Rome was so successful. Because you can play, say, the Bretons. And then you can play Parthia. You can play the Romans. And then you can play Egypt. And have two completely different play styles. It's really fun. Really engaging. And of course the remaster. Great. I like the remaster. And I've played it on my channel. You can check the Parthia campaign out. Uh, Medieval 2. All your Medieval 2 stands. It's going in A. I was going to put it in S, but otherwise there'll be too many in S. Um, oh, should I put it in S? Well, Medieval 2, another fantastic game. Great fun. Again, very easy. But yes, great fun. Uh, brought in a lot of concepts for later games like armor piercing, all that sort of stuff. And it's a fantastic, fantastic game. And of course, although I said I'm not going to bring mods in, it has to be mentioned that Medieval 2 has the best mod of any Total War game in it, which is Divide and Conquer, or originally Third Age Total War, now it's merged into Divide and Conquer, the Lord of the Rings set Total War game, and it is the best Total War mod out of all of them. I'm sorry all the other Total War mods, but that mod is amazing. Check that out. But Medieval 2 on itself, 
it stands alone as a brilliant game. It stands alone as a brilliant game. It's fantastic. Um, great fun again. That is the one thing. It's just fun. It's very easy. So the challenge, you know, isn't really there that you get with some of these later games. But the fun element just makes up for it altogether. I believe the next one uh, was Empire. Now that brought in the Warscape engine. So completely new engine. And it has to have some props for that. But on top of that, it had a horrendous release. Riddled with bugs. Um, and now with Darth Mod, it's very playable. The one thing I love about Empire is the three theatres of war. Kind of Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings-esque, where you can go around the whole map if you want. Not exactly the whole map, three separate maps. But you can get so rich getting your trade in between all those regions. Uh, you can have a great fun playing in different regions, playing different enemies and different playstyles rather than just playing in Europe. So, yes, I do like Empire, really like it, but for that release, I've got to say, Empire's down there in C. And you can see where this is going for Rome 2, can't you? Uh, Napoleon. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Napoleon. Solid B. Solid B. Now, the reason why it's bumped up to B uh, and not C is because it took Empire, got rid of those maps, which is kind of a shame, uh, the campaign in Napoleon, not brilliant, but the multiplayer battles, oh my days, the multiplayer battles in Napoleon are so good. So good. Uh, it's just a shame that it's hard to find them nowadays. But yes, the Napoleonic multiplayer battles, really fun. Really, really, really fun. Um, good, strong mechanics for multiplayer. Different troops, different abilities. Troops with very differing stats depending on what you're using. You know, might you might use grenadiers that are better in melee. You might use the old guard because they're amazing, but they're very expensive. But as I say, the campaign's not brilliant. Um, the uh, the historical battles are actually very fun on that game. Yeah, they're good and they have good sort of a challenge to them. Uh, I do like the the historical battles. Uh, the different campaigns adds a bit of variety, but. You know, the Italy campaign is not that great. The Egypt campaign is not brilliant. Um, the Peninsula War campaign is actually probably the most fun out of all the different campaigns. But again, it, it's not as good as the European campaign. But the European campaign is relatively easy once again. But that is a theme throughout Total War. It's, it's not a hard game. They're not hard games to do until you get to Attila and Rome 2. <laughs> Basically. So... The next one, was it Shogun or was it uh, Rome 2? Um, I think it was Shogun, wasn't it? Total War Shogun 2, oh, come on. It's got to be S tier. It is an amazing game, brilliant game, great multiplayer features. Um, great with the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but where you um, anim um, animate, where, not animate, um, where you lead an army. Um, you upgrade your unit to whatever you want it to be, to be specialized, specialist in something. Great multiplayer battles. Really good campaign. Obviously, the one thing with it is they're a bit samey, the units. Um, we also got a note in Empire, they brought in that new building system where you can only build one type of building in certain areas and stuff. Where I did really prefer this old, the Roman Medieval 2 style building system where you can build whatever you want. Um, and... You know, it removes that sort of specialization from cities, but it it removes it falsely, in my opinion. So, you know, if you're building up a city and, and buildings start taking five, six, ten turns to build a building, you will specialize in that certain path and you're not going to be able to specialize in another. You could be a jack of all trades and be have, you know, one of every tier in a large town. Uh, but yeah, you want to be specialising anyway, so you would specialise your buildings. So I really don't like that new system of building. But yeah, Shogun 2, brilliant game, very good campaign, adds challenge as well, a lot of challenge. Um, and it's in sharp contrast to Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai, in my opinion. Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai is too samey. It's kind of boring. The battles feel very arcadey. They don't feel right. Just don't feel like they belong in a Total War game. I, I can't explain it. I've never really had fun with Fall of the Samurai. The only time I've had fun is going on a custom battle, getting a thousand peasants, getting one Gatling gun, and going. <laughs> That's the only time you really have fun with that game. Um, 
But no, yeah, it's it's not. I I mean I mean it is the same game basically, but in a different setting, and that setting kind of ruins it in my opinion. It's, it's Shogun Two though, brilliant game, and I guess I'm putting it in D just because of the disappointment of it not being anywhere near as fun and engaging as Shogun Two itself. Now let's get to our last two games, Rome Two. This is going to be the most controversial one. I have to. I'm sorry, I have to. I know it's been fixed a lot, and I know it's brilliant uh, with Dividea Tempira. All of those mods, like, I know it's brilliant with that, and I've played Dividea Tempira quite a lot, and it is really fun. But Rome 2, when it came out, how, do you remember? If you remember when it came out, how big a disappointment it was, how bad the response was. How much people hated this game. All those crazy mods. Angry Joe did a huge video. I think it was 40 minutes long. Just basically ripping into um, this game. Like ripping into how badly they released it. I can't forgive them for that. And it's always left a bad taste in my mouth whenever I've played it. Um, which is very unfortunate. And it just goes to show you why game studios should actually finish their games before they release them. The problem was, were they ever going to live up to Rome Total War? Were they ever going to live up to how good and how nostalgic? Could they ever, you know, remove our nostalgia-tinted glasses and give us something new and good? And I don't believe that was an achievable goal for them, really, because Rome Total War was seen so well remembered so fondly by so many people that even if it had been a half decent game when it came out maybe we would have all been miserable as well but yes it it definitely wasn't that they did release the game in a broken state and like empire that always leaves a bad taste in your mouth with david a tempira it's up here by itself it's down there ah tiller uh, Attila's good. Attila is good. They managed to fix a lot of things with Attila, not release it in a broken state, and added a lot of systems into Attila that are quite fun um, and quite challenging. And that is one of the things with Attila. It's one of the most challenging Total War games out there by a long way. By a long way. Definitely of all these classic titles because these guys are easy, man. Empire's easy. Napoleon's easy. Um, and Attila is just like... Bang! Have a bit of hardness. Have a bit of Dark Souls for you. Like, it's, it is good. I like that, that freshness. Uh, but then again, I, I still have issues with that engine for its melee combat and how it deals with melee combat. So for me, I can't put it any higher than a B, unfortunately. But yes, I believe that's everything. I've also got a ranking video where I rank all the Rome Total War factions, all the Divide and Conquer factions, and all the Rome Total War original Roman units. So do check that out, along with my Parthia campaign in Rome Total War Remastered. Um, that would be excellent, guys. And please do like this video, subscribe and comment. That would be amazing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video.